doing so make sure that your video is off and also let's respect the decorum of the meeting there are those who like to just unmute by microphones unnecessary can we also refrain from doing that then um let me welcome again you honorable members uh, we, we have been here since morning then we adjourn for the house sitting now we are here again also to welcome uh, the executive mayor with their delegation uh, this is a continuation of a meeting that we held on the 18th of august so the issues that were outstanding that we felt we were going to discuss today i, I think we must re I appreciate that um, we have since provided all the relevant information executive mayor want to appreciate you for that with your team then but the issues that we understand we were outstanding then was the issue with regard number one mpex response on its oversight in the municipality that was outstanding and then there were no uh, satisfactory answers when it comes to ppe procurement uh, there was the issue of settlement agreement with the staff involved uh, in the Mali administration, and that was not adequately explained. The other issue was in relation to the, there was no detailed report on the unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditures. Then the human settlement issues raised during the oversight and the human settlement uh, during our oversight, myself and the uh, the human settlement and water and any different type person. So those were the issues that were under outstanding on my side. So I should think then we can continue on that note. Then uh, the issues that then if we can continue, there are issues that um, you can talk to them, executive mayor than making a presentation because we've since uh, made the presentation. So I'll hand over to you uh, and maybe take us through the documents that we have uh, submitted to say this is in relation to what, and then we'll take it from there. But I've tried to refresh your memory on the matters. Over to you, Executive May. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I'm going to start as per the covering letter on the issues that we have sent. Uh, and that, Honorable Chair, my, my apologies, allow me to greet Honorable Members uh, of the portfolio representative from uh, the department, uh, Mr. Morale. Uh, the team led by the municipal manager in terms of directors. Um, from oversight, Chairperson, the speaker is struggling to connect all the way from Makotopo, but I hope he will be successful. The, the chief whip is connected, chief whip of cancer. Our MMC for finance uh, is connected, MMC in Mulebo. Good evening again, Chair. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. I'm going to start with the question which was raised uh, by Honorable Sengi Kalipi, and we have attached to members of the committee the council resolution with regard to issues that she asked on why did Council not proceed with the forensic investigation which was detailed or approved by MPEG to cancer. And we are explaining, Chair, that there is no resolution of cancer that was taken with regard to Honorable Mukalipi referred to the forensic in line with fleet 
and strip and coat and the issues of all of the list of what that report detailed. And in the attachments, as it was taken as a report to council, we have attached the entire report which went to council with its recommendations. And uh, there was never a resolution in council since 2016 to date, which deals or authorizes a forensic investigation on any of the issues that were raised either at MPEC or were raised as a, a per rules of council where or uh, council can write a question either to the speaker or to the executive mayor for any other issue that they would want the matter responded to. We have never had a resolution of such. Second chair, I will deal with the issue which are talking to resolution 27, July of 2017 where honorable members requested and we have attached all the resolutions which were in line with the, the minor breaches and ratification deviations with regard to unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. We actually, on top of that, show that before that item was taken to council, it went to the Portfolio Committee on the 17th July of 2017. It went to the Mayoral Committee on the 19th of July. It then went at the end of the month of the 27th of July to council. And that is how we arrived as a process to Council Resolution 27 July of 2017. And that we have, as Council, decided that as per the regulation uh, resolved on item four, on all of those that they must be reported to the MEC and they must be noted and they must be referred to MPEC for investigation to determine if there was expenditure, recoverables or irrecoverables and sanctions that need to be done. We went in through all of those IUF items one by one chair. You will see the, the attachments that follow and what the CFO was sanctioned to do. But on top of that, we not only provide the council resolution, we attach the report, which is what went to portfolio. Mr. Mashiane is also here. The author of that report is in attendance to report to council through the portfolio committee on the issues of the deviations and the issues which particularly uh, uh, Honorable Tengiwe uh, 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 was interested in in strip and quotes, they appear on the list. On the second page of that report, it does indicate that deviations, they are attached as an extra A, they were to the tune of around 30 million. And the irregular expenditure, an extra B, also attached to the tune of around 191. And the total of the two was to the tune of around 222. I will stop the chair because the information was sent on these items. And towards the end is the list detailed line by line of what was that deviation about how much did it cost from what unit and what was it for. I will then move to the next question chair, which was dealing with the issues of um, uh, PPE we had provided, which we still did just to guide and refresh the memory of the honorable members. We had indicated that we had 
six companies which collectively provided goods in line with PPE Circular 100 and Circular 102 to the tune of 5.3 million. In the summary page, we break down first company, Madigua, was to the tune of 1.1 million. We described the goods that they gave. Honorable Hussein asked a question and requested additional information and said, I just don't want that summary. I want to know how much did you pay for the gel, for example? How much did you pay for the thermometer? How much did you pay for a battery, etc.? With that summary, Chair, there is an attachment which starts with the first company, which is Madikwa. I will not go through the entire list, but there are about 29 items which were submitted. We have given the description of the good. We have given the date of the request. We have given the delivery date. We have given the quantity. We have given the unit price. We have also given the unit price as was set by National Treasury so that the members can see if there was a saving or if there was an upping with regard to the unit price or if there was overpayment. There was none of that. Collectively, Chair, we saved a total of around 1, million. So in essence, if I may to continue, just extrapolate one example from the first page, because the next page talks to the second company, the next page talks to the third, until the six companies to make the collective 5.3 million that was spent. Treasury gave a guide and say, when you advertise, you can ask for gloves at 32 rand 90, for example. We were provided a quantity of 51 to that value at 32 rand 90 at one, uh, to an amount of uh, uh, 1, 1667. I did have household the date, a guide from Treasury was 59 rand, 59 rand was utilized. Instances we have been able to get savings in six the gloves. Treasury was given a guideline of a, a, set, a certain uh, amount and you will be able to get a lesser and create a saving which subsequently led us into a, a full saving of around, uh, uh, as indicated at the last page of those uh, 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 um, uh, attachments in terms of uh, the circulars. Chair, I will stop there with regard to this issue. Supplementary information has been provided. The cost thing, we did not spend extra than the guidance of circular 100 and 102. We actually had exercised a saving. Honorable Chair, you requested the issue of settlements. Settlements have been provided. We had indicated that all the members of a, 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 that were charged uh, seats were given in the second page a verbal warning, written warnings rather, and uh, we attach who those directors were and give the real written record, not a summary of the hearing themselves, attach the date of the notice of the hearing, the summary of the hearing notes, and the council report. I'm not sure if... But I also did indicate, Chair, that we made a settlement with regard to director corp services, I mean, director corporate services and shared with, with the MM, with the CFO, and with director transportation. And uh, you, 
additional information has also been given with regard to what were they charged for, the exact record of the charge, the exact record from the council report and the settlement that was given, which was uh, the latest, which was given was that of the CFO, but all were given more or less six months settlement of what they were earning at the time. We could not print, ideally, I wanted to print even the closing financial certificates of those. When we were transferring information from a, a, a summaries to the new system, we only transferred three information to the back system. The rest is at the backup. It needs us to make a request call from uh, the Office of the National Treasurer to be able to make uh, that. But the council resolution in terms of the settlement agreement signed after mandated by council to give a, 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 a particular months of, of, of a settlement and that uh, they accept it within five days. If not, council will continue with the issues. I think, Chairperson, uh, the next question was on a, a certain Miss Susan, uh, a certain Miss Susan Paswana, who the question was saying her debt moved from. 28 rand to 7,600 in January 2016. And the second person being Tsepom Sheka from 400 to 7,000 within two months. It has been very difficult to deal with this question. One, in our system, we do not have a Mr. Mseka at all. It could be possibly Mr. Mseka is a tenant and paying an account on behalf of certain individual who is the owner, and therefore Mr. Mseka does not appear in our system. We will ask for additional details from honorable members if we could, maybe an account number so we could be able to trace. The whole M system has no Mseka. Question one was dealing with Susan Paswa. The information was limited, Chair. We even tried to check with the figures of 28 rand to 7,600 in 2016. We couldn't. Our uh, bill uh, overall has 40 Paswana people who have got an initial of S and it was difficult. If we have an account number or a stand number, say it's a Shiro stand number 12, we will be able to allocate if the house number 12 belongs to Susan or we'll deal with the bill. Second question, Chair, was that there were incomplete projects, if you will recall that we dealt with and we attached a list of 30 incomplete projects into the presentation. And the question additionally was, what is your policy and how do you deal with that? We have contractual implications which culminate into signing of service level agreements, some of the functions of Mapule and legal services and the contractor prior him or her going to sign. Some projects have been abandoned, as we have indicated. We blacklist the company and restrict them to bid for the coming five years, which means we remove them from our database and also report them at the national level. We immediately terminate the service, which means there is no extra cost or pay that is made to contractor because the municipality pays at the level system, if you are you are paid for a establishment of site, site is assessed and you are paid only for the establishment of site. So if you are building a major sports complex, for example, which was one of the projects which were abandoned, 
you will only be paid in relation to the work uh, that you have done. So those were the additional information that we submitted to your good office on the request from honorable uh, members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Councillor Rabimin. Colleagues, those were the responses plus the attachment before I go to the representative of National Treasury. Can you first deal with this set? Or you want me to go straight to National Treasury so that they also respond to the issues as raised, then we are going to then deal with the questions collectively. I'm at your mercy. What do you propose? Palipian, mute your microphone, yes. I propose that let us take uh, the treasures report. So we can combine the two. Okay. Thank you. Can I introduce uh, Mr. Sfiso Mavoso to you? The questions that uh, you will also introduce the colleague is traveling with. The questions that we asked the National Treasury uh, was. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chaperson. What sound is the sound? I can, I can hear you clearly, Chaperson. Do you hear me? Yes, but there was like there is a flight or a helicopter landing behind you. <laughs> okay, no, so, sorry, Chaperson. Okay. Good evening, honorable member uh, Chaperson and the members of the of the committee and as well as um, the leadership from the municipality led by Councillor Tembi and uh, Gadimem. To start with uh, the chairperson, the, the colleagues will be will, will fly to the presentation, just a short one, um, in response to the support that Treasury is providing to the municipality. Yes, the municipality um, did face uh, those challenges that we discussed in the last session uh, as they migrate to the financial to the new financial system. But it is very much important, Chairperson, just to put it to the House, that uh, despite all those challenges, uh, the municipality did, did them a remarkable well because they managed to table, uh, they managed to submit, to compile and submit the annual financial Piso. statement. Yeah, yes, Piso. Piso. You did it, you are not to my that I, I'm here, Chairperson. The video on as well. The video on, plus the light on. The two of the. The video is on, uh, Chairperson. Colleagues, can you see him? It's only me who no. can see him. I can't. Yes. Put on the light. I can see you. Put the light on now. We need the light where you are. Is it better now? Light. I can see you, but you're too dark. We need the light. Is it better now, Chaperson? I can see you, but you are so dark. That's better. <laughs> okay, no, sorry for that. Um, 
what I wanted what what to present, uh, there is your person. What I wanted to submit so, to the House is that despite the challenges that the municipalities uh, was faced with as they migrate to the new financial system, the municipality uh, managed and uh, uh, successfully produce the annual financial statement for 2018-19, which is a remarkable uh, uh, achievement, given that the auditor general was able to audit those uh, financial statements. Otherwise, it would have been a, a disclaimer. But it managed uh, in that uh, uh, with those challenges, Chairperson. What what we have uh, also to submit to the House is the support that National Treasury is, is supporting the municipality with, with regard to the M score, which is a standard chart of account. All municipalities are expected to, to be in that uh, system of accounts. So there are quite a number of meetings that we had with the municipality. Even before they changed to the financial system, we did provide advice to them and then say which route will they supposed to take in order to successfully change the financial system, on which the municipality has followed duly, and then we appreciate that part. But also, uh, there are circulars that we provide from time to time, uh, advising municipalities to say uh, which area they must focus on and which route they must take and what they need expected of them to, to do in order to, to successfully migrate to the m financial system. Over and above that, uh, Chairperson, there are other portal or avenues where municipalities, when they are struggling, we are able to provide support and be able to put it in our website so that everybody can have the benefit of the same information. Also, with Pulukwan specifically, we did, uh, um, there was an m advisor which was attached to the municipality full time, on a full time basis. So all those are part of the support that has been provided to the municipality so that they can successfully implement the M score system. Also, I want to, I would like to submit to the House Chairperson that uh, even the, the budget of this financial year, the municipality is doing in the, this M score financial system. So it's quite a remarkable achievement given the task and the mammoth work that is required and the challenges that is required when you change from one financial system to the other. There's a data, there's quite a lot of things involved, but the municipality has managed to, 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 to perform its duty and be able to, with a minimum disruption that has happened, but they've managed also to produce all those uh, statutory requirements. This is what I wanted to submit uh, uh, at this moment, Chairperson. Thanks. Thank you. Are you still loading the presentation? Oh, you are covered. You have covered what is in the presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Chairperson. Initially, you were saying you wanted to load the presentation. Yeah, but I've already you have already loaded. I've already covered the, the, the information that is in the presentation, Chairperson. Yes. No, there's no need to load that a uh, two page uh, two slides presentation. You've covered it in terms of what you were saying. Okay. Thank yes, you, thanks, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mamaso. Members, can I see? Yes, show yeah. faces. Show faces. Mukalipi. Yes, can Chair. Can I see? No, I'm still noting the hands. I'm still noting the hands, Honorable Mukalipi. All right, Chair. Who else wants to talk on the matters? seems it's only yourself okay thanks can i be allowed not to put my video on because of the network chair it's okay all right chair if i can ask um 
the report that was um, responded to by the mayor to be flighted on the screen so we can all see what I want to raise with the mayor, especially on my issues that I raised. The, um, the report was sent to the committee, especially on the resolution of the council, the last points on the report. Andile, can you assist Honorable Mkalipi, please? Chair, there's quite a few uh, documents relating to the council res resolution, so it will take uh, a bit of time to find the, uh, the right document. Which document, Honorable Mkalipi, do you want it to be flagged? The one that talks about what? The resolutions of the council on deviation. The one that the mayor was talking about, what the council resolved, uh, including that they must get a permission or something from the MEC. The last slides. Okay, as soon as I find it, I'll flight it. Uh, the mayor can't flight it. She was talking about that slides. She was reading what was the council resolved on. I'm sorry, Honorable Mukalipi, I only have it. Uh, the, I have the originals of council resolutions themselves. I can't flight it. But I think I can try and guide. If, yes. Um, you are referring to the one which has got the attachments where you were referring to strip and quote. Yes, but I'm interested on the resolved ones. Those bullet points, I think there are eight. That the council yes, is not yes. of the report, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the eight resolutions. Honorable mm Mkhalipi, -hmm. council only took four, five issues which were resolved on C council resolution 277 of 70, not A. Okay, which date is that, uh, Mayor? Is on the 25th of 07, 2018? Not 2018, 2017. Okay. That led, the, of obviously, it may not necessarily be with everybody, but it starts with, on the first page, it has got City of Pulukwan, and then it says the resolution number CR, that is council resolution 27, July of 27. That's it. Thank you. Okay. If you okay. go Thanks to page the... two, yes, if the, the driver can just scroll down. Can you please scroll down? Mm hmm not the driver, Honorable Mkhalipi, but the following page of this document has five issues which were resolved yeah. to be actioned by the chief financial officer. Mm -hmm. And the first was the resolution was that council take note of the report of the deviations for the financial year 1617. Number two, that the irregular expenditure be referred to MPEC for investigation to determine if the expenditure is terrible. Three, that you need to disclose that as by law in your annual financial statement, which are to end in June, and you need to report to the MEC on 4 and it to have compiled 
all the unauthorized and whatever expenditure per direct rate. Now, as you scroll down, we did not only end by giving you the resolution. We also then go went to an extent of giving you the summary of all this unauthorized, which was investigated and given to council by MPEG subsequently. And how were we advised by supply chain coming from budget and treasury in a report which was then taken to the portfolio committee on how to rectify these issues in future. Okay. So in the following page, if you scroll down, you will see that these are council one. As you scroll down, we give you a portfolio ones before the council seat to show that the document was a written report by the manager under the C. This is the report under the CEO, CFO. It goes to the portfolio chaired by MMC Mulepo. It discusses, it has four recommendations, which means council would have added a fifth recommendation, which was not necessarily there from the portfolio. Okay, Mayor, are you done? Chair, must I come in? Yes, I'm done, uh, Chairperson. It's done. Okay. Chairperson, thanks for the clarification from the Executive Mayor of Polokwane. However, when I have um, uh, requested this information in terms of the clarity last time, I think I specified that I was referring to a minute or to the council that took place on the 25th 07, 2018. So now I can see that the mayor is responding and is um, presenting the report that was presented on the 25th 07, I mean, on that date that he mentioned, but it's 2017. It's 27 07, 2017. So, uh, so it means that we are not talking about the same thing because the resolutions of the date of 2017, 2707 are not the same with the document that I requested the information from. So therefore, maybe before I proceed to chair, may I check with the mayor if there was another council resolutions on the 25th 07, 2018. So we can go um, ganye, ganye, to understand these issues are almost the same. Chairperson, am I allowed to respond? Uh, I request your indulgence. Okay, Honorable Councillor Gadiman, you can. Thank you very much. We uh, thank you. The document is flatted now because I have the copy. Honorable Mkalipi was clear that she is reading from 2018. Mm. The MM's response also was very clear that we have the first one which dates prior this month of the financial year of 2018. So we wanted to give you the 2017, how per impact dealt with it and respond to the issues of 2018. Now let's let's scroll down on this 2018 honor of Okay. Because remember, we were saying additionally you will need the 2017. So you are saying I'm sorted with 2017. You now have a copy. Now let's go to 2018, you you have scrolled a bit too fast for me, but I have the document with me. It's okay. On top there, Honorable Mkhalipi, before you go to that resolve chair, just go to the box of the minutes of council, please, on this page. Thank you very much. 
we show even on this page on Mkalipi, that there was a special finance and led portfolio which said on the 18th and there was a mayoral committee which said the same day and then there was a council meeting which said on the 25th 2018. our council normally sits on the last thursday or wednesday of the month generally now let's scroll down to the recommendations of 2018 which is the document that honorable mkalip was referring to that day and is high tech is flighted. The first recommendation says council take note of the report for financial year 1718. We've already dealt with 1617. The second resolution says um, you are on recommendations of the portfolio. Honorable Mukolipi wants the aid of council. So jump this one because this is portfolio. Go up. Council doesn't recommend. Council go up to the resolved part. It has got eight parts. Honorable Chair, can you help me with the driver? But Honorable Mkalipi, because you have it in front of you, we can still be continuing. Resolution one is to note. Resolution two is that the UIF be referred to MPEG for scrutiny and investigations. Three. MFMA National Treasury be requested to condone according to section 170. Four, council take note that there was no fruitless and wasteful in CAT during the 1718 financial year. Five, that a comprehensive report on the unauthorized expenditure be submitted to council. Six, UIF including deviations be disclosed on the AFS year ending 2018 that a list of employees who received watches for long recognition as a reward be provided to council that the chairperson of MPEC ensures that the outcomes and progress of all reports referred to MPEC for investigations be submitted. There was never a resolution of a forensic investigation Jefferson. even on the 2018 as you go down you then find in this report of today on the list of those people including on those for 2017 including this one which makes a total of 104 million for irregular expenditure with no freight they know no wasteful expenditure. And you are, we attach the report line by line on who caused whatever deviation that was needed. How much did it cost? Which unit was that? MPEC investigates and report to cancer. There was the words from the executive mayor, 
that the Council of Polokane never resolved on forensic investigation. But if Honorable Mukali have evidence, the Portfolio Committee will allow her to present uh, that evidence. But nevertheless, Chair, I just want to get clarity from the Mayor is how much in 2017 you wanted to be debated uh, and resolved by the council and how much in 2018 uh, the council was requested or resolved to debate uh, that uh, uh, money uh, as per the document and then uh, on the resolutions because even the, the National Treasure also presented here, uh, it's also uh, in terms of the resolution that by the council, uh, it's also said it very clear here that in terms of section 170 of the MFA, the National Treasure be requested to condone the non-compliance with the regulations. So therefore, if the National Treasure can tell us is they are cited on the report here of the Council of 2018. Uh, I'm interested to get the, the, the also the information from the executive mayor on the 2017 one, on the resolution of the 2017, whereby the council also resolved that the MEC must also say something. I can't uh, quote verbatim what is said in the report. I'm interested on the issue of the MC. If did he allow the council uh, to deviate from and ratification of minor breaches? So the reason why I'm, I'm I'm asking this amount that was resolved by the council in 2017 to be deviated and also in 20, 2018, I just want to get a clarity. If 2017 and 2018 were still dealing with the same. Uh, issues or it was separate is the new cases in 2018 or in 2017 is the is the old cases or is the same cases so it means that when you resolve in 2017 it didn't happen so the council has to come a year later on the very same issues the other reason is that mayor apart from the in the forensic investigation now uh, is one of your mandate and as a leader of the council, just to, to, to take us into confidence. Because one of the issues that I was raising even last time was the amount of the deviation that were requested. For instance, I think in one of your, your slides there, or in that very same document that is written a uh, 480, you know, the, on the spreadsheet, uh, there is a PM488, which is under repairs and projects. Uh, and I raised that thing to say that uh, councillors, when this report was tabled in the council, other councillors were raising some concerns to say that this PM488 that needs to be debated by the council, some of them, they went and checked the value of that Nissan Baki. Apparently, the council buy the old cars and repair them. But the amount that we are paying when you repair those cars, uh, you buy a car with 66000 but when you repair that car, it costs you more than a million. So because we are talking about the money that's supposed to go and assist people in terms of service delivery, do you think, Mayor, that... Uh, when you want this deviation to take place uh, on these um, monies that were used by the council, do you think it was, is it, is it a good thing to do? Whereby you can see that there is a, so much things that went wrong as a result that we have to deviate so much funds. And I'm happy that the National Treasure is here as well to look on those things. Because I remember last time when we engaged on this issue, I think the MM or the mayor herself. One of the reasons why you wanted this deviation because they were, that were the system that you were using were double paying people. So you have changed the system now. But one of your council resolutions say, suggested that the MPEC must look at this issue and investigate more 
in order to recover some of the money. So if you can also clarify uh, on that specific ones, because we are interested as this committee to recover monies that we think it was used uh, in a form of corruption, if I may, pay, I may put it so. But now the National Treasure is also here in terms of the resolutions and the MEC and all other stakeholders that supposed to work with the municipalities um, to avoid to the misappropriation of funds. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll just stop there. Thank you, Honorable Thank you, Chair. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I must respond with the rest. Honorable okay. Mukali, please comment for now. I'd allow that dialogue. I said, you were referring to. Yeah, I was the, to ask a question, but I. Okay, Chair. I think I'm covered by Honorable Mukali because my interest is, was on deviation. So her last question has covered me. Thank you, Chair. You are covered. Okay. Mine for National Treasury. I've got something for National Treasury. Uh, when one read, read your analysis, uh, you, 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 you referred to the municipality's financial position whose liquidity position is declining. Uh, they too asserted to that due to the fact that they couldn't even fill some of the senior management positions. At the same time, the AG has picked up the utilization of consultants, which is 144% higher than the salary bill of the municipality's entire finance department. One just want to hear your comments on this as a support department to the municipality. Okay, over to you, uh, Executive Mayor, and then Mr. Mawaso will respond to my issues. Thank you, Chair. Um, Honorable Mkalip, our, your first question is how many, how much in the two financial years, that is the 2016-17 financial year. Let me just start by the issue of the Honorable Chair forgot my camera. <laughs> Let me start with the issue of the proof. What we are giving here are direct extracts of council resolution, which are recorded. I think I must be very clear. So if you go to a council meeting of the 27th of July 2017, this is a direct council resolution. If you go to our records, you will find it exactly as it is. So we took it out and printed it. I think that's the first part which I want the committee to note. The second part is on the 2017, on page... 615 of the council document, which has been sent as additional information because we did not have 2016 17 in the past city. It indicates that deviation and are attached today as an extra A of this first part, counted to 30 million. Irregular, which is an extra B, attached amounted to 191 and we give a detailed list of all of those from one to the last to make a collection of all of those cases individually from one unit to the other and what was it about the MEC, if you look into the recommendation, it was for reporting, not for condoning. I will read on Kalip. It says 
Cancel resolve number four that all unauthorized irregular fruitless wasteful expenditure be reported to the MEC for local government. But by extension, Council was saying if the, ME, the MEC feels he also wants to have a look on what Council has gone through, there could a, even be an external hand that comes. And that we submit the report summarize, which I have said I have attached. There were never cases until to date, even in this current financial year, of new cases of UIF. The reason why these were recurring was because of the five year contract of BRT, which we explained, which led us to what happened as a form of a consequence. Hence, we spoke today and then about the settlements and the charges on what was irregular about the uh, 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 appointment. There was no money loan. The initiation was run by National Treasury. Those in terms of public participation for a contract which exceeds three years, cancel approval for a contract which exceeds three years. But in that investigation, National Treasury said services must could. We made an example of in the fleet, at that particular time, Treasury came to investigate those contracts. Municipal fleet as part of the awarding of that contract was already so, so we couldn't terminate those contracts. Now, the, the next part was the repair for 88, for example, that other councillors were uncomfortable. But there are many decisions as a general, I'm not comfortable with. Liberations and independent views from all councillors. There is a collective that council makes, and a collective decision is what we have brought to you today. Yes, it could be that there were councillors who raised a number of issues that I don't think we must take this way, we will take this way. Even on councillors who you would expect they come from the same party and they may have to agree, but they don't necessarily agree. Using whether we tar road A versus road. If road B is in what one and road A is in what two, the one who doesn't get the road will be unhappy and may not be in agreement with the selection on how. But ultimately, council will resolve which road must. So that does not mean because I was not happy, it means there was a forensic that was agreed upon. Chairperson MPEC is in this meeting. There was never in cancer there has always been impact reports which are tabulated we differ on our approach but ultimately resolve as now after that was dealt with we did attach in the last presentation cancel the went to mr mashiani who is a manager supply chain and said let's find the best way on how to deal with Strip and quote, because council is not happy. But council did not say deviation. And there was a report which we tabulated on what was then a process which was followed in terms of getting annual contractors rather than going one by one, giving cars to individual mechanics. But rather, council and MPEC came of the it is not a script that even can not necessarily happy about the process of strip and hand cancel allowed the impact to go and physically one verify if there's a card like that that exists. two if there was a strip and code like that which was done three and it's not only in those items even on housing even on arena and everything we always encourage our portfolio to go 
physically inspect so that take a report. Reported thoroughly on it in the last part. Auditor General, when he was auditing, he paid two double payments. The report when it came to cancer, cancer mandate to go and do investigation with the internal audit office. They discovered 29 additional payments to the 625,000. They brought a report to cancer. And go get our money back of 625. Ask the four officials and improve the system. So we came to the committee in the first sitting. We showed you that 625 has been called. Four officials were charged. Money was paid. So there has never been any other double payment. The two were picked up. After I took the process for investigation, additional 2032 were discovered and the money was paid back. MM, I would like you to touch on the process of deviations and reporting. Possibly you will explain it better than me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. I wanted to add and explain to the committee how deviations occurs in a municipality so that the committee members can have a deeper understanding of why a municipality will do deviations. Uh, Chairperson, deviations are done in terms of the supply chain <laughs> management policy. Can you put your video on? I've pleaded with all of you that when you are given an opportunity to speak, you must put your video on. We are live on parliamentary channel. Uh, Remember, thank you, sir. Okay. My video is on, chair. Sure. Yes. What I was explaining, chair, is that the municipal supply chain policy as well as the regulations, uh, the municipal supply chain regulations as published by National Treasury, takes into cognizance that in running a municipality, sometimes it will be impractical or impossible to follow the official procurement process. And I will give a classical example of instances where it is impractical or impossible to follow the official supply chain process. If a cable supplying particular area is stolen and that cable is available with a sole supplier in the city, we will not advertise for a period of 30 days in order to get companies that can supply cables in Johannesburg, Cape Town, tendering to supply such a cable. In that instance, it becomes impractical or impossible to follow the official procurement process. Given the agency of the service at hand that we will need to provide, we will then go to that supplier in the city utilizing the section of uh, our supply chain policy to procure that service so that we can uh, restore the service to the rate payers within the shortest available time. Now, another example that I want to give, Chair, we want to advertise a meeting of council on newspapers. We will go to a newspaper get the quotation and advertise the meeting of council as mandated in legislation. So you will not have the time to advertise for 30 days to get a radio station that will 
uh, come and tender in order for you to go and advertise with them. Now, honorable member that asked the question, if you look at the, if you look at the attachments, under each and every item, we then indicate what was the reason why we couldn't dispense off with a normal supply chain management process. So once you have done that during the course of the year and running a complex municipality, such as the city of Polokwa, given the complex nature of the services and the area we cover, we will always uh, do some minor uh, deviations because in most cases it will be impractical or impossible to follow the supply chain process. Now, having done any deviation during the course of a financial year is a standard practice in all municipalities. You must now take at the end of the financial year the whole list to the municipal council of instances where it was impractical to follow the supply chain management process. Again, I want to give another example. If we book for councillors for a SALCA conference, SALCA will be the sole provider for that conference. Whatever we pay, we will then report under deviation to say we paid 5,000 for uh, five councillors, 1,000 each for attending a SALCA conference because SALCA was the sole provider for such a conference. Now we will list all of them and then go to council. Now the requirement is that council must then approve them, but council not just approve, they will note the report and take the report to MPEG. Now the purpose of MPEG is the question that the honorable member asked whether there was any recovery. MPEG will go line by line. On this one, you were booking for councillors for a SALCA event. Was there any physical loss of money or is there any need to recover? Then MPEG will take and say, this one they were paying for a SALCA conference. There is no need for a recovery. The city did not physically lost any money. They will then go to an instance where a cable was bought from a local supplier in the city. And they will then get the records to show that a cable was stolen in this area. Here is a job card. That cable will utilize it to restore the service in that area. They will do a tick and say no physical loss of money. So MPEG will scrutinize each and every deviation to be in the position to advise council whether money was physically lost or not. Let me give an example. If MPEC finds that we did a deviation, we bought bricks. They will ask, where are those bricks? Then we will run around and MPEC will come to the conclusion that no bricks were delivered under this deviation. Then MPEC will go to council and say, based on our investigation, the municipal manager or director so and so or manager so and so, disciplinary action needs to be taken for ordering bricks that were never delivered. So in this instance, council has physically lost money. But once we detect such instances as management, we act even before MPEC can come in to make sure that we recover whatever money that council might have lost in the process. So I, I want honorable members to understand, uh, you will never come to a situation where you say, as a municipality, we will never do any deviation because deviation is provided for in the municipal supply chain management regulations, but it must be recorded, it must be reported to council, it must be investigated at the end, and MPEC must come back with a report to advise whether there is any need to recover or whether there is any physical loss of money that occurred in the process. It's also a requirement that 
you will need a council resolution so that you can disclose in your annual financial statements at the end of the financial year that these were the deviations as approved by council. And the auditor general will time and again look at what was the outcome of the investigation by MPEG. Whether it was 30 million, did MPEG find in that 30 million instances where the city has physically lost money? And most of the time since my arrival, MPEG will come to the conclusion that the city did not physically lost any money. There was a need for a particular service uh, to be rendered. I think there was another issue around council buying old cars and repairing them. I think uh, as a municipal council, we never bought any old vehicles. In fact, the supply chain management policy does not make permission for a municipality to buy old vehicles and repair them. Let me explain, when we repair municipal vehicles, the practice that we have introduced is that we look at the nature of the repairs, because now they don't just repair, they must get approval first before a repair can be commissioned. And when they come and say, we need to repair this vehicle for 140,000, we look at the value of the vehicle and say, is it value for money to repair this vehicle? That in terms of the book value is 90,000 and spend 150,000 to repair it. And in that case, we will then discuss with the asset manager and the CFO, and we will then write such a vehicle off and say, it is, doesn't make financial sense to repair a vehicle with the money that is almost more than the value of the vehicle as it stands. So that is the process that we have put in place to make sure that the city at any given time can get value for money in terms of what we do. I think I have uh, tried uh, my level best to explain the process around deviation. So uh, same issues will occur in different, every year, every time cables are stolen, and sometimes they steal the specialized cables that you will not necessarily under normal circumstance put stock off because they are expensive and there are those cables that last for a longer period. But once thieves attack such a cable, you will need to get that tape cable as a matter of agency. And some of the practice that we do as municipalities, sometimes we will check with the next door municipality, Makato, do you have such a cable? If the answer is yes, we will do paperwork, they will borrow us the cable, we will then fix whatever uh, that has been stolen, we will then buy the cable and replace them. But in most cases, some of the cables that we use on our networks are more than 40 years old, very difficult to get them on the open market. So they will be sole providers that will have such a cable. And in that instance, you are forced to do a deviation because it's impractical or impossible to follow the supply chain process. But deviations is part and parcel of day-to-day -day management of a complex municipal infrastructure and the provision of services. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. On, on the question of uh, uh, liquidity, Chairperson, that you have raised, my comment will be as follows with regard to Pulukwane. They are faced with serious challenges in terms of uh, revenue management uh, with regard to payment of services by communities. There is an area there in Mangueng where the municipality is struggling to collect uh, for municipal services. Uh, a, a, a council need to assist uh, administration so that they be able to collect and encourage community to pay for municipal services. Also, the management of the indigent register, it, it remains a challenge because you have a situation whereby even people that not necessarily qualify uh, or, or eligible 
to be provided with free basic services they are uh, uh, provided, which means the management of the register is a challenge. But also, Chairperson, with regard to the repairs and maintenance of the infrastructure, more so on the water, uh, electricity, it's faced with challenges with regard to, to the water because once you buy water from the water board, but uh, a huge percentage of that water goes through the leaks. So it's a problem in terms of revenue management. All that, all, all those the factors affect the liquidity of the institution. With regard to the uh, use of consultants, uh, as National Treasury, we don't encourage the use of consultant, provided the consultant had to add value and also there's no available skills within that in the municipality. So the use of consultants uh, also, we have put circulars in the, in the, in the, in the, in the treasury. We have also, uh, um, in our reports, when we communicate to the municipality, we also highlight this part on the cost containment part to say they must minimize the use of consultants they, uh, because there's or, uh, staff members there that must be able to carry or do the work, not necessarily consultant. But the use of consultant, it's in the discretion also of the municipality and council's decision. In that regard, uh, Chairperson. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you. Colleagues, do you have follow ups before I raise my own issues? Yes. Yes. Yes, Chair. Um, followed by who? DG, followed by DG, followed by um, Treza. Will be Mutalipi. In that order, you can start on a Thank, Thank you very much, Chair. Thanks very much from National Treasurer. Honorable by Kalipi. Uh, yes, Chair. Chairperson, you don't hear me. Yes, it's your turn. Uh, can okay, you Chair. Now? So. All right, Chair. Yeah, wait, there's a network problem. Maybe let me switch off my camera. Ne? Mm. So it, I'm very happy to 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 say that what uh, the national treasure, represented by Sfiso, uh, pointing to the fact that I wanted to raise with the MM, Sfiso is saying that um, let's take for instance there's a water project and then the money is used is paid for to a water board, but in terms of people getting water. The infrastructure is aging as a result that water is wasted, but the money is paid because the MM is saying that uh, since the deviation is a, is, is a standard process procedure in the council, so he is painting a picture that there's nothing wrong for the funds to be deviated. He is even further saying that there was no money that was lost in the council, which is not true. In the document, in the very same uh, council resolutions, in that document, on Agnes Shah 433, Chairperson, they are saying that the electric, electrical materials uh, such as Medupi distributors, who ARP electrical wholesalers, they were paid on several uh, occasions. But the reason for deviation is that the SCM process is impractical due to the appointed service provider who failed to deliver services and that services was compromised. So the MM can tell us here to say that deviation is a standard procedure because it means that any municipality can go and misappropriate funds and misuse funds and rely on the standard procedure of deviation. That's why I said uh, earlier on, let me talk to the mayor who is the political head now who knows very well that if there is no de service delivery, someone somewhere as a poor person is going to be affected. So it must not be correct to say that let us deviate funds because uh, of one, two, three. We are talking about a lot of money that can be uh, assisting poor people on the ground. So I don't take that point because even in the document that is provided here, it stipulates very clear that some of the deviations can't be justified. For instance, the one that I'm making an example. 
The second one that the MM is trying to spin here to say that uh, you can buy a car with so much, but the document that is presented by the municipality also, it raises some eyebrows. How can you repair a car? Uh, you repair a car for 1.9 million. What is the use to repair a car using 1.9 million? So we are saying this deviation, it must not come and bite us in terms of poor people on the ground. So I'm saying that Chair, in that um, same document, when the council resolved, they said the MPEC must go and further investigate and scrutinize, and they must come and report to the council within 60 days. And secondly, uh, we are told, even last time, we were told that some of the companies that were double paid, so some of them, they have made to repay money, maybe as a way forward, because if the municipality does not give us a satisfactory answer to this committee, we therefore tend to poke Tanishna to say as a department, what role did you play to save the money of the ordinary South Africans? Maybe the list of those companies that the municipality are saying that they have managed to repay. And also the report of the NPEC, because we are talking about 2018, we are in 2020. 60 days in 2018 is three months. We must get that report and we must get that list if it's true that uh, some of the people have repaid money. Because we must get to the bottom of, the, of what happened here. So the deviation must not be just used to cover corruption that is taking place there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi. Honorable Mpumza, can you put your video on? I'm only seeing uh, some boxing gloves there. And put on the light. Honorable Mpumza, I'll skip you. Honorable Kaiser. Honorable uh, Executive, may I mute your microphone? I will tell you when it's an opportunity to respond. Marco, please mute your microphone. Can I ask Marco D to mute his uh, microphone, please? Yes, Honorable Kaiser. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. No. Uh, let us appreciate the clarity that has been uh, provided for by the municipality in terms of uh, what is the process of deviation. And they are saying that they, they then, uh, there is an MPEC which scrutinizes, as, as Honorable um, Kalip has, 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 has already mentioned, uh, and even uh, giving examples of ordering bricks that were not uh, that 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 were not de that were not de delivered, which will give rise to to the deviation. Uh, Chairperson, the Auditor General uh, uh, flags Pulukwane as an example uh, of of water losses, um, which amounts to 48 million due to aging water infrastructure. With the municipality's uh, maintenance plan not having specific time frames and targets to address the the problem, and I hope, Chairperson, this is uh, this information is quite. Uh, that's why I said uh, for for the presence for the presence of 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 credit. I mentioned the Auditor General on record. Uh, that uh, the information that I'm giving here is also uh, consistent. Then, Chairperson, the Limpinze, there's, there's a Limpinze trading which was awarded uh, 90 houses, uh, units, uh, each costing the amount of 115,000, totaling to nearly 10 million, uh, in which oversight was done on construction site and checked. Um, and checked seven and uh, compared seven houses. Of that seven houses, two were poorly constructed. And this, Chairperson, uh, should uh, illustrate 
uh, what we what we have said in the committee uh, before. I don't remember the the municipalities that we we were facing with, but uh, we raised the issue of quantity versus quality. Uh, that you have 500 houses that are built, and then you and then you compromise quality uh, because uh, those houses will then uh, when whenever the 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 there is a there is a storm uh, will 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 will, uh, will will go away we will, will be eroded and uh, this amounts to uh, unnecessary expenditure to person and uh, and in terms of what they say here about uh, about the 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 impacts having to probe the those those expenditures uh, what what measures have they put in place? What what is the impact view, view in terms of what we have mentioned here in terms of the the water infrastructure uh, and also the consolidated report on municipal audit outcomes 2018-2019, which I'm hopeful, Chairperson, once again that it is uh, 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 not limited. Uh, no, no inconsistent. Uh, that the municipality spend 54% of their wage bill on their finance department to the tune of 249 uh, million. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, improving audit outcomes. Can 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 they explain? Can they explain this 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 fight to us vis a vis what they have played? Is there a network glitch yet? Okay. Okay, Chair. I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Hello. Okay. I think this can be answered then by on my side. Yeah. Let me try Honorable Mpumza before I raise these issues. Honorable Mpumza. Honorable Mpumza. Honorable. Honorable Chair. Yeah, Chair, I think. Uh... Honourable members, uh, um, they have covered the question that we're to, uh, to raise in the even the follow-ups. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mine, I want to link it with the institutional capacity as presented. Your... Can you meet your microphone, Honourable Mpumza, please? Thank you. I wanted to link it with this institutional capacity that you have put in your presentation. Zooming in, in the CFO in particular, uh, he assumed this position on 1st September 2017, which means uh, the, 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 the Better part of the financial year 2017 18, he was there. Because if September is just that he missed the year, the beginning of the financial year, just by two months, then he was responsible to oversee the financial department 2017 18 and 2018 19. In both financial year, you got qualified audit opinions. In fact, for the past, for the three financial years, you have been obtaining a qualified audit opinion. And then, yes, the CFO is a chartered accountant registered with a SAICA. Then I want you to, because the reason why I asked Treasury on the utilization of, of, of consultants, I thought they would say yes, we discourage, but if you check the AG's report, one Bonaco the consulting was doing financial consulting, paid 10 million. One I at consulting PTYLTD 
dealt with the maintenance of assets, paid 26 million. MTC tax consultant uh, was responsible for vet reviews, paid 32 million. Then uh, I'm seated there wondering, what are the skills of the finance department by which you are paying? I think, in fact, you're paying over 44.8 million for the staff there. Maybe the CFO must assist us here in terms of the breakdown of your finance department structure and what skills and qualifications of the finance personnel. I think that would assist us a great deal to understand what are we dealing with. The issue that the MM saying that you are dealing with the complex uh, municipality. No municipality is not complex, but if you check, if it's an issue of compliance with the regulations, you cannot be told here that a, 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 it's a complex municipality. So I'm raising it based on the non-compliance issues that has been raised by the AG as well. Then I hope that when the MM respond, they won't tell us that we are dealing with a complex municipality. On the non-compliance issues here, the AG raised that there were 14 projects that were continuing without the service level agreement, 14 of them. Then MM, can you tell us which projects are there, you name them, at what cost, uh, and then if there's a complex thing to just sign a service level agreement will tell us because these are basic requirements the way in you have to enter into service level agreement and contract with the service provider you enter in. So you tell us which project are this and at the Edward cost. Then there was also 11 awards as per the AG's finding that were awarded to providers who were in the state of service. They were in the service of other state institutions. And I believe because you have been seated with this report, I was trying to read that, to check through your audit action plan. I didn't see that coming. So can you share with us these 11 hours and who are these uh, officials that are in the state institution that has been given the standards? and then also the cost of each of these projects as mentioned here. And then there was this issue that the AG raised again, that you didn't give them enough, enough information to confirm that all extensions and modification of contracts were properly approved. It comes to that issue that my two colleagues were raising on the deviation. Because there are instances wherein you extended contracts, modified contracts, but you couldn't give the AG minutes leading to that, those approvals or the actual approvals. The AG, when they were auditing your books, they couldn't find such. And then there's this other issue that was very prevalent, is the issue of you monitoring the performance of contractors. You have been expected to monitor them on a monthly basis. And as the AG requested information, there was no such thing. Some contracts were left to just continue as they are. Hence, you have a lot of contractors that uh, remain incomplete based on this because somebody has been failing to monitor the projects as is expected every month for you to do such. So these are some of the concerns that uh, we are having, and I should think now that you have read this AG report in terms of the remedial actions, you will be able to explain that to us. Yes, I've seen the list on the settlements and the sanctions as submitted to us, but that there was a monetary value aspect that was asked to say how much did you pay the CFO? How much did you pay uh, the previous MMS settlement? I've seen the voluminous document. Maybe it's my reading that made me not to see the actual figure. 
the documents have been submitted, but I think you will be able to tell us today how much for those employees that you have settled. The CFO must be able to tell us if it's the MM, this is what Kansari paid the MM. And what was the cost of that DC? Because when you decide to settle, there was somebody whom you hired to chair, investigate, or maybe even preside. The settlement is an outcome of the DC as it has been presented, but those figures as to the cost, we don't see them coming on these attached documents. So I should think the CFO must tell us the final details to that effect so that we are able to understand what are we dealing with. Over to you, Executive Mayor and the team. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm going to start with the questions of Honorable Mkalipi. Honorable um, Mkalipi, I'm going to refer you and Honorable Members into the report in its entire that deals with deviations and what was council oversight. In, in the 16, 17 measures in that council document is on page 615. This is what council resolved should be the measures which deals with deviation that before a deviation can be processed, the SBU must be requested to draft the memo to the CFO for approval for that a deviation if the reasons are not acceptable the deviation is rejected and normal supply chain processes have to be followed so so this is cancel dealing with corrections on what we do not want to see or deviations we went to strip and quote which you dealt with and quoted as unacceptable and remember in my previous reply i said for for the very fact that council felt they had to refer the entire report to mpeg in its entirety they wanted a report from npeg for council that is executive mayor's oversight strip and quote we came back and said they look unavoidable. It has been recommended that the SBU must source a panel of accredited supply, which means you will Can advertise. Council Langadiman, on which page? Yeah. A report which has the additional information sent to your honorable office. The report, which has the attached letter and starts with the covering page, which talks to resolution number 277 of not only give additional information with saying how much was deviation, I quite a full report that was given to council and that were the basis of that report that council noted because if you say council note it's a bit limiting you don't know what was noted now i'm going through that page you start with the resolutions and then there is a report and there are measures which council adopted when they noted this report. So on top chair, it is written 615 because this is a report which is already part of the council document and it was page 615 of that council meeting. That's how you could easily identify it. So if you you want it to uh, have uh, uh, flighted is the very first report chair where Honorable Mkalipi and myself were interacting forensic. With your indulgence, Chair, may I then continue? But I wanted to showcase that because we are talking about resolution, it does not mean the resolution did not have 
clearly outline processes that administration must follow which are coming from an adoption of what council adopted. It actually then talks to eternal control measures, which are seven in from deviation, ratification, extended contract, cancel support, unauthorized expenditure, and irregular expenditure. I think that's the first part. So when we are saying on top of this, you then ask Honorable Khalif, why, what was it about the MEC? We then felt on, at the end of this council resolution, we took this entire report to our provincial court and said, look at how we are dealing with this, look at how we are uh, taking the matters forward so that if they have got issues of dissatisfaction, they can also be having a window to raise them. There's no way in the legislation where this is said, but it's us as council saying, you can further look into how are we processing matters of such importance. I don't think uh, there was any dereliction of duty here, uh, Honorable Mkhalipi, with regard to the deviation re reports and oversight going to cancer. What water losses in, in the previous financial, two, three previous financial year, the municipality together with the Department of Water and Sanitation changed all the income. Net the entire of town. Ladana. Only zone one in Sishiko, if I, I recall very well, because of uh, 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 um, funds, and it was the CPD up to step closer to Savannah Mall, which are the oldest parts of our types. Honorable Mkalipi, Honorable Feza, they in excess of 40 years old. Honorable Chair, you know Mangueng, for example, at the A, at, 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 at the A's next to the university. Those pipes are in the region of almost 40 years, and the losses are high. We have been able to the loss, the CFO can give us the figures directly and how much have we began to say do we plans as a municipality to change the entire pipe of zone two five a portion of 12 a portion of what 37 in Sishiko, for example where the pipes are over 35 years old no that is what makes our water losses high. Do, do we have a water master plan with all the lines of those pipes, their ages, their timeline, their line where they go? Yes, Honorable Kaiser. And it was submitted to Department of Water and Sanitation. Is the very same which gave us a portion of Arbit and the municipality took out a portion to make a total of around 454 and change the pipes in the portion of Sushiho and the portion of the city. Now, the essence could have been that we have the plan, but if you do not have the a plan remain what is on the table. For example, do we have a roads master plan in the province, in, in the municipality, yes. Are all our roads tagged? Why? Because we don't have the money. We, we tar, we've just finished of what we could afford. We're only supposed to tar 10 roads. No, the number is in some amount of what we need to do. Car repairs. The reason why we brought the 2017 report was then to what council resolved in 2017. 
channel in the eighteen when if that report you will read the eight resolution I tell it is a report which is part of supply chain who then was dealing with strip and directly as per council resolution that we no longer want one 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 going there but we need an accredited panelized system assessment and monitoring could be done so that we do further losses with regard to the area of strip and coat and that was over and that's why the 1617 report was brought so that you can juxtapose it with the 1718 to show the progress of moving from one financial year and the other. And if you will recall, even in the next financial year, the AG did not raise those issues. Hence, in our audit plan, it was showing that there is rather than repetition on which have been raised, except on the issue of the system. Days to report back by MPEC. Put, put the measures and said to MPEC, go review, see, and come back to cancel with a clear timeline on what needs to be done. The 625 on Arum Kalibi has nothing to do with deviations. Chair, you still have the presentation of the last, of the first appearance. We were interact double payment, which the old system was making. And, and we reported that as part of the findings from the, there were two, two double payments which were found by the Auditor General. Council just did not only entertain the two. It go with internal audit. And that from the first transaction of the financial to the last and check double pay. We reported to this committee that that was fed that found 29 extra double payments making them an addition of 32 if you add the two that were found by the auditor totaling 625 we provided a slide with name of officials who were subsequently charged for the double payments and of the AG on the two, but the entire amount on the two, which was 625, break down and that it has been paid back. So that matter is closed and never recurred, and it's not in the new system. So had we cancelled the release, you would have just taken the two that have been found by AG and said, okay, we'll deal with the two, Bye-bye, that's all. But Kantel said, okay, MPEC, go back. It's a two from AG now. Thank you, AG. This is what comes from one and come back to Kantel. And they came back, they said 29 extra at the process. MM, recover the money, charge. Money was recovered, charge. It has nothing to do with deviations. And that information was fully given to the committee in the first presentation. The, the, the first one on water losses were you were with honorable Kalipia there because it's about water losses and aging infrastructure. You say, raise the second question with regard to uh, with the company called Liperita Trading Unit House. We explained to the committee that Pulukwane municipality is not licensed to build even to date. We do not hire contractors. We do not receive a budget from human settlements. 
way only assessment of human settlement and with regard to beneficiary aid in case where they don't have land we provide land the contractors are theirs the budget goes straight to the department monitoring and evaluation we have put a process where assessment by the ward councillor from the owners of the houses which we then forward to Coxta for them to ratify are there challenges yes but they are beyond what the municipality can do are there incomplete projects yeah, you will recall you asked us we send that information to you for example on a desert, they will allocate to the municipality in a year 1100 rtps and gave us out of that 1000 maybe 10 contractors and then you allocate them to what beneficiaries they start the contractor put a slab and score and the chair in his official visit asked are there slabs in Pulukwane municipality i said honorable chair yes there are slabs and we submitted that information in writing but what can the municipality do we have a team headed by the mmc Nkwe, who interact with the housing together with our housing team to try and find solutions in those are the of poor quality yes not even only on the areas where you have mentioned as in this contract but we have a letter process and we'll request the department to act with their contractors and ensure that the handover happens but not a pulukwane responsibility so this 10 million if you can say to me give this breakdown how do you appoint the contractor no we wouldn't have that it's the department we give land and beneficiaries in, in the rural areas usually marosh allocates a land to the particular beneficiary and the person's house will be built in that area so we will identify that there is a clear policy on how to identify approved by council those list comes through to council with what committee uh, councillors and then taken to coxter they get a contractor they monitor all those issues i will ask the cfo and the mm to deal with the issue of the wage bill but your line was not very very clear but i got a sense that you are saying the wage bill is high i'm not sure if I am correct, but I will ask uh, uh, the MM and the CA to deal with the issue of the wage bill. From Honorable Mutambi, I think those questions were uh, the first one was directed to the CFO, and the other ones were measures and MM monitoring of contracts. The list of, of settlements, CFO. We went down to, to try and pull the information. Uh, the CFO has the figures. Uh, there were those who were given three settlement contracts and a six settlement contract, and I don't have them uh, uh, with me. We can articulate on those as we tried to make an estimation from the figures from the total of their uh, pay packages of the time because cancer would have resolved for example six months or three months and uh, the amount that's what it was the difficulty we had the chair slightly was that generally the system keeps the information to a certain extent and once a person has been closed off and no longer an employee you only remain with hard uh, uh, paper, letter of up, leave days, etc. The backup system, hence the system was ultimately had to be upgraded. Then uh, uh, the system were heavy uh, back then. I think, uh, Chair, allow me to 
ask the questions of Motambi with the one of a, a wage billable treasure to be dealt with by administration. Thank you. Over to you, administration. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I will start by asking my CFO to respond to the question around the institutional capacity. I will follow on the 14 projects and the 11 hours thereafter. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thanks, MM, and uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. And uh, you've been to. CFO, can we see your picture? Video oh, uh, apologies, apologies, apologies. CFO. Okay, I can be seen. Can you see me? Yes, there you go. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Chair, and evening, Honorable Chair, and all the Honorable Members and my colleagues. Uh, just to then answer your questions, Honorable Chair, on the institutional capacity. Uh, Chair, yes, you were right. I did assume my position around September 2017. Now, remember that when I assumed the role, obviously we had to look at what were the issues that happened before. Uh, and those uh, audit outcomes uh, was in 2016-17. And if you look at the very first presentation that we have done uh, two weeks ago, you, are, you would have remembered and that in 2016-17, and the MM also reported, there were around 17 paragraphs on the audit report. And therefore, when Yuan does an analysis, there was really, you know, a skills gap, including vacancies. To get 17 to 17 paragraphs on the audit report really needed, uh, you know, a, a solution and assistance. So to that effect, we then obviously utilized uh, you know, the, 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 the consultants to assist us to build that particular uh, capacity. Where the vacancies uh, were, were, were seen or were critical were mainly coming from the AFS reporting. When I mean AFS, I mean annual financial statements reporting unit and the compliance unit. We also had a challenge of an aging staff workforce. We had staff that were in the accounting section that were nearing retirement and we also discussed in the first engagements where you know the crops tenants have becoming very complicated and we really needed you know new younger staff who could then uh, you know utilize the recent knowledge so that was basically the assessment that that we have done but uh, if you have to look at uh, you know, when we when we made, uh, you know, the use of those consultants, which was required to build that necessary capacity. Honorable Chair, you would see the trend. Uh, if you look at, like I indicated, the 16-17 financial year, the qualification paragraph for many, around 17, as MM indicated in the first meeting. But then if you look at the trend that in 16-17, 18, 18, 19, you see that the amount of the uh, audit qualification paragraphs has reduced significantly from the 16-17 financial year. And uh, that was a as a result of the assistance from the consultant and also uh, we were building our capacity. Now, the qualification item that was recurring, as you can remember in our first presentation, was that issue on the revenue estimations, which we attributed to the financial system, which I think we have deliberated on it in the very first meeting that we had. Now, what have we done since then? Have we still then sat back and just said, hey, the, the consultants are here, or we have managed to you know, make a particular difference by appointments and capacitating uh, the, uh, the PTO or the budget and treasury department. So remember that when we appoint these consultants, there's always an exit strategy. The consultant's uh, term expires in this financial year. So in anticipation of that exit strategy, we have done a lot, Honorable Chair. And what have we done? We, since the 16, 17, 18 financial year to date, 
we have appointed four accountants, additional accountants, who are going to be assisting us in the AFS processes. And one of those accountants includes a qualified chartered accountant who will then head the AFS section and also deal with technical issues that are to be raised by the AG. In addition to that, Chair, we have also capacitated our compliance unit with two additional staff members. Now, the compliance unit was specifically created to oversee and monitor uh, the compliance, in particular, the irregular expenditure. And that has worked quite well because as we've reported in the first sitting, that for the past two financial years, the municipality has experienced no new irregular expenditure. And I think the EM and the MM may have articulated in terms of the irregular expenditure which emanated from the previous financial years dating back 13, 14, uh, if not longer. So the two additional the presentation of the compliance unit has also had an impact. Uh, considering that, Chair, the Honourable Chair, uh, in this financial year, which is 1920, we have then got, or we are in a position now to do our financial statements in-house due to the appointment of those accountants, including the CA, who's going to be heading that process. Uh, so the consultant whose term is expiring in this financial year would be in a supportive role where and when required, but the financial statements uh, is going to be prepared uh, in-house uh, for the financial year that is, going, uh, that is going to be subject to audit. Then, uh, uh, lastly, the, the the issue about the, the, the as the executive mayor has indicated, was what was the settlement figure? Uh, since uh, the information uh, or the the settlement occurred, I think around six years, five to six years ago, we we had to we needed more time to uh, to to get the the information because it existed in the previous you know, all the system uh, that was uh, uh, used at that time. But like the EMS indicated, Honorable Chair, uh, is that uh, we have a rough, uh, uh, you know, uh, estimate that uh, we could have uh, pulled out. Now, as the EM indicated, I think the settlement months was either three uh, to six months. Now, if I can just go to the information that I have uh, for the CFO and the MM, but I'll start with the MM at that time. If the settlement, like I like to indicate, it was either three months or six months, I do not, I must be honest, I do not have the exact uh, settlement term. Can I, can I intervene? Can I intervene? Yes. Yes, Chair. Honorable Chair. So what you did here, you send us the settlements agreements and those settlement agreements don't have figures Figure. they will talk about that month like uh, i'm reading one now that i can quickly read up for you on the settlement agreement it says with all those lists of misconduct the others like gross dishonesty gross what what here is one that i can quickly read for you that i've seen it says uh, they're going to pay uh, this person something like a uh, five month salary calculated within yeah, yes. It says the employer undertake to pay the employee three months, 10 months, 10 days salary determined on the basis of the current salary total cost to the employer including a living adjustment with effect from 1st July, as soon as same is approved by council. So when I look at the dates, okay, it's signed on the, in August 2015. So those are the dates that we're indicating, but then that figure to us, because our expectation and our questions were very clear to say, Tell us exactly how much it will be. So, if you then send us this settlement agreement, I mean, it's so unfair to members. 
because there's no figure that is disclosed. And this, these are the things that we could have done to us. Unless this document has just been sent to us just for malicious compliance. It's a concern because all our questions were very clear. Hey, this person, how much did you pay? Then if that information was an, uh, uh, not available, you could have said that in your written response. Because that's the concern of every member here. All these settlements that are given here, they just refer to the number of months and days starts deducting some something but doesn't give us the exact figures. So the question is that this document was just it didn't say we want settlement agreement ourselves. We we're very clear. Our questions were very clear at the time. How much did you pay in order to settle this? Because we knew it was settlement agreement like you said in your presentation. The simplest thing that you were supposed to do was just to give us those figures. To say for this so and so we paid so much for this so and so pay. and you see if you look at the settlement agreements they were prepared by lawyers and then for this DC this is how much we, we paid in order to settle these are the issues that we're asking because yeah that's that's those are some of the issues that the the information is not here at our discussion these are the things that we're asking you see for. Proceed. Can I come in? Yes. In my explanation, I was explaining that. I think the CFO would have simplified your matter by going into the table of finances. The M was in a salary scale of one from Settlement was six months. The CFO on the table did say what we were trying to say is that we would have wanted to give you a settlement statement from the system to show the safety of the six months plus the leave days, which was then made as a total. Payment. Not that we don't know, know how much the CFO was in a salary scale of 1,5 per annum. And you then break down the, the settlement in months that were approved by days that would have been due at the end and the overall total. Now, because of the chance discretion to the system. We couldn't print it to you, Chair, and we did not want to only with figures as in numbers. Supporting document. Hence, I said we had needed additional to go, go through the contractor into the system and print. The others were the scale of one call and we will then give you a printout of the three months that they were given including the leave days and what was ultimately paid by maybe i should have been a teacher chair i'm better than the cfo because i could hear he's confusing you more we have the info but as we have been we have created this standard for you even by giving a copy of a council resolution we wanted to print and give you as a committee where possible through the old system which was utilized say mm was me Kony, and she was at this scale and this is the resolution and she was a scale to 1.7 and she was given this settlement including all other related and the tax bracket, this is how much that she got. Now, we could not get the second part of the information besides the part of the settlement, because as you correctly put it, Chair, the settlement does not did not only talk about six months on. It goes to an extent of what were the other benefits or what was the person owing, what did you deduct from her before making would have wanted to give the end list of those officials and the, uh, the MM and the C. 
that two were directors. One was CFO, one was MM. Lived there also the cost for the lawyers. Because you can see there were charges drafted for these employees. It's the lawyers that concluded they said. No. I'm sorry, Che, I had even they forgotten to switch on my mic. <laughs> my yeah. Che, I've noted that as an additional question, uh, I do not have the costs now. Okay. But we could be able to secure that and submit it in a printer to the chair. You see, Councillor Gadimen, we want to understand the cost that costs the municipality to, to institute a disciplinary proceeding of gross violations and misconduct then at the end, the cost of settlement with that effect. vis a -vis, because the explanation you said the DCs were going to prolong law, to take law, that was the conscious decision, but we wanted to understand that so that we are able to understand as a committee what are we actually dealing with here. Okay, so can we commit that we're going to get that information by Tuesday, please? Unless if you tell us Chair, that I lost you at the end of the sentence. Can we agree you're going to give us that information with the total breakdown by Tuesday? I know systems, but systems do have deadlines. Unless if you are telling us much of your information is not there at all. Or your information is gone with the service providers. Can you beg your, can I beg for your indulgence, Chair, on just this matter? Because there's a point I want to emphasize, and we've just touched on it now. Honorable Chair, the Samra system was owned by a company which was coming for her, from Hermanas in. That's the old system we're using. If you recall the old explanation of the MM in the previous, even when the system was down, the municipality was compelled to fly Mr. Sorenso from Hermanas in Cape Town to Pulukwane to come Samras or whatever portion of the system that was a problem. That was one problem. Besides that, the system was smaller after the municipality amalgamation and this is a process for us that we in a, a, a back that has can you, be, can you meet your received microphone? by the municipality from Samras. Chair? No, I'm listening. I was talking to Honorable Mukalipi. Oh. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chair. We will bring the information to a good committee for scrutiny as, as we have received. If I don't be, receive it by Tuesday, Chair, the access and the committee, I'll interact, but we want to be in the committee and we will make sure that we that the committee receive the information, the breakdown. In its entire, not only the demands we have shared, but we know it is there is a other leave days. So I want to add the interest of the committee. Ultimately, the M for this month at this rate because uh, pay was 1.7 put a column and then i put a column for uh, additional maybe leave days or whatever and then i put a column of any other uh, issues which were, con were, were considered and give you a total i commit to the committee um, 
I don't want to have a dialogue with your executive mayor, but there are things that, uh, whether system or not, these documents are generated through papers where approvals are done through memos. So then they get captured in a system. Maybe the end results that way, when you pay, then you lose the system. But everything is generated. So that backup information also, files get opened. This is the information that is in the SP files of these employees that are there in the municipalities archives. Unless I'm to be told this municipality has been paperless since ages, since time in memorial. That's a proper explanation that one would like to understand. Uh, Honorable Mkalipi, your microphone is on. The CFO was still on the podium when we interjected him because we can see the issue of settlement. There were other issues that the CFO was still going to respond to. Can we hand over back to you, CFO? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I think I've uh, addressed the issues on the institutional capacity. Uh, unless I have missed something, but uh, I believe that the issue on the institutional capacity uh, and uh, the root causes I have addressed, uh, unless I've missed something, Chair, uh, but I think I... Can, can, can we understand? It's you, the CFO, you have a deputy CFO. Do I understand that you saying that? Sorry, uh, we... The CFO, who are the, your immediate subordinates? And the levels, this is what we understand. We wanted to understand. Okay. Okay. Vis -vis the utilization of consultants. Okay. Uh, yes. Thanks, Chair. Share with us uh, how your structure, how your finance structure looks like. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, in and terms of the, the levels, okay. including their qualifications. Let's deal with your senior manager, your managers. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, uh, we uh, the the organigram has a deputy CFO position, which now uh, the deputy CFO uh, contact has has um, uh, come to fill the deputy CFO position. But in terms of managers, we have the asset manager, we have a supply chain manager. We have a revenue manager, we have an expenditure manager, and lastly, we have the budget and reporting manager. So uh, you, have got, you have got five managers. Yes. The deputy CFO. Yes. But like I indicated, the, the, we no longer have a deputy whose uh, contract has expired uh, around 2019. Uh, so, in terms of those managers, uh, the managers have the uh, the assistant managers uh, yeah. and uh, the staff beneath them who reports to them uh, in their respective departments, Chair. So, both these five managers have got assistant managers as well? Uh, they have assistant managers, yes. And then staff reporting to them? Yes. And then can you share with us the staff component of your entire finance department? How many warm bodies in terms of the organogram? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't have the the the, the exact uh, figures with me now in terms of the the the, the warm bodies. Uh, we can then furnish that information to you but I do not really have the, the, the exact numbers with me now. You know why I was raising this question? I'm going to allow yes. the others to yes, come Chair. in. I said I'm mindful that you came. You were two months. And then the number of qualification, when you came in already, it was three or two months. And then yes. indeed, if you don't address the previous year, 
the issues as raised by the AG. They've got the possibility of recurring. And the SGS and when the audit will still also find other matters that they didn't pick up in the previous financial year. That ends the importance of you developing an audit action plan and put clear timeline so that by yes. the time you get audited, you have resolved all of those other issues. Yes, That's Jeff. what one is trying to raise. Okay. And then I'm raising it given the huge amount that you have been paying. Because year one, one will have understood. Because now I'll ask again, for 2017-18, mm -hmm. how, how much was the figure which you used to pay consultant? Because the one of 69 million is for this year under review now, 2018-19. Definitely you utilize consultant as well. Still you got your qualified audit at you. Yeah? Yes. After you yes. And at what cost for 2018-19? Yeah. At what cost? The year where you were two months later, I understood it that the rationale of you utilizing consultant in your first year, it was well and good. You just came in into the institution. You needed extra capacity. Yes, but now this year under review, what qualified and justified the 69.9 million given the number of staff that you have indicated you have at your disposal? It's when people are not doing what they are supposed to do, they are paid to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then before that, when you answer that now, because you have a fully fledged finance department here. Now you are seated at the now it's three point five million irregular expenditure alone, not coming to the unauthorized wasteful expenditure. And then with this financial stuff. Can you share with us also the consequence management that you have invoked to ensure that a staff do what they are paid to do? Also, given this uh, huge utilization of consultants that is 844% with the eight years, raise it in their annual report. Okay. Yet the results still become qualified, no movement. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, in terms of the 1718 financial year, the, the specific figures for the consultants, um, I don't have it readily available uh, other than the 1819 that we have been doing. But yes, we did uh, then utilize. The, the, the 17 18, uh, financial year. Uh, uh, chair, chair uh, in terms of, uh, just to get it correct, in terms of consequence management, um, I think the, 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 uh, the use of the, the, the consultants was basically to build uh, the capacity chair uh, that was, was lacking. And uh, by using the consultants, uh, Chair, we have then seen in terms of our, ex of our exit strategy, in terms of the transfer of skill plan, Chair, is that uh, uh, we have, like I indicated earlier, we have seen a reduction uh, in the audit qualification paragraphs, if I can say, uh, like what I've indicated. In the 1617 financial year, there was about 17 paragraphs, and you would see that in the 1718 financial year, the 1819 financial year, there was a, a, a drastic reduction in terms of the audit, uh, you know, qualification uh, paragraphs. Uh, the, 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 the transfer of skills. Into how many CFO? If uh, they, sorry, Chair. They reduce from uh, 17 to how many paragraphs in the next financial year? Yes, then if you look at the 17, 18 financial year, Chair, there was two, there was two paragraphs. Two paragraphs uh, as indicated where there was a so it means new estimation in the commitments mm. and then the 1819 financial year there was the three uh, the one was as a result as the age indicated was was as a result of the migration so we had then that additional third paragraph uh, for the last financial year due to that once of uh, migration chair uh, and then, Chair, so, so the transfer of skills was happening gradually 
uh, you know, as we build capacity, like I indicated, we appointed the four accountants, one including the CA. We appointed two more additional staff in the compliance unit to look into the compliance, in particular, irregular expenditure. So that's what we have been doing as part of our exit strategy. And uh, Honorable Chair, you have also touched on terms of the action plan. In terms of the action plan, we have a monthly meeting, oh sorry, a weekly meeting every Monday without fail. That's also been attended by our uh, MMC for Finance. We call it the Operational Clean Audit or OPCA. And every Monday without fail, uh, we, we, we meet and we discuss uh, the progress in terms of uh, you know, on our audit findings and where we are in terms of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, progress. So that's what we're basically doing. Uh, and with the capacity that we have then created, because like we indicated that this financial year, we do need in-house, the, the meeting takes place on a monthly basis where we monitor uh, such progress, Chair. So the, the trajectory in terms of moving away from consultants by bringing in more capacity and doing in-house is already been seen. Uh, and like I said, uh, that uh, the audit outcomes are monitored uh, on a weekly basis, Chair. Chair, thank you, Chair. Chair? I'm here. I'm here. I was trying to digest what you were saying. I, I'm trying okay. to avoid the dialogue with you. Uh, okay. Let me allow the other members to come in. Uh, Honorable. Yes, uh, Chair. Yes. yes, Chairperson. Yes, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, I think that um, I believe and I know that this is a follow up uh, meeting with Folokwane since we met with them. And it's very important to engage with the Polokwane municipality since the executive mayor is the president of Salga. And if you remember very well, Chair, we decided as a committee after the AG's report suggested that out of 257 municipalities, only 20 received clean audit. Then the committee raised concerns around that. Then we took a decision that let us engage uh, firstly, with the executive members uh, of uh, the national leadership of Salga. And then, hence, we started with Polokone Municipality. But, Chair, starting from what I raised earlier on, regards to the deviation that took place uh, in 2017 and 2018, and I also uh, said it here in this committee that I'm not satisfied about the reasons of the deviations. The mayor tried by all her best to put it uh, to this committee the reasons, and the MM tried as well. And then there was a, a resolution in one of those uh, council resolutions in terms of the MEC, and the mayor spoke about it on several times to say that we as a municipality, we even said before we conclude on the matter of deviation because it involves a lot of money. We as the council also resolved that the MEC must be part and parcel of our decision. So we cannot be accused as the municipality to say that we have decided on, on our own and we concluded on the matter. And I wanted to get that clarity because Chairperson, as I repeated, and said that when we engage with municipalities in terms of misappropriations of funds and the corruption that is taking place in municipalities, so if we don't get satisfactory answers, we want to know from Salga, we also want to know from Cogta nationally in terms of their role, because we need to make sure that these municipalities go back and function very well in order to service our people. So in this case, I really want to propose, Chair, that we must have another follow-up with Polokwane. This time, the MEC must be present to, to emanate from that deviation that took place in 2017, where the municipality also recommended that the MEC must be part and parcel. The second reason why I want the MEC to come back 
specifically Populukwane Chepesin. There is a letter uh, in 2020-03-19. So the letter is from the MEC of Limpopo writing to this municipality attention to the mayor of Polokwane. So that letter speaks exactly on what I'm raising, the role of the MEC in the province. Because most of the municipalities, Chaperson, are under Section 139. And most of them, they are operating through the administrators. So therefore, we said to this community, when we engage with different municipalities, we also have to play our role as COCTA because once we are relaxing as a committee and we get information late, the information that suggests that no things went bad until uh, the, 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 the municipality was put under administration. So therefore, we have agreed on our engagement at some point to say that we must be proactive as well and avoid situation whereby municipalities must be dysfunctional in such a way that they must be put under administration. So therefore, that's why we need to engage with MSC at an earliest convenience on the issues that you have raised as well, Chairperson. I was listening to you, to you attentively on the issues that you raised here that needs the community also to process it. But the letter that the MSC wrote to one, it reads as follows. I'll share on the group. Dear Councillor T. Ngadime, visit by the department to conduct a rapid assessment for Lokwane local municipality. In terms of Municipal Systems Act 106, subsection 1, if an MEC has a reason to believe that a municipality in the province cannot or does not fulfill a statutory obligation binding on the municipality or that maladministration, fraud, corruption, or any other serious malpractices occurred or is occurring in the municipality in the province, the MEC must, by a written notice to the municipality, request the municipal council or municipal manager to provide MEC with information required in notice or if the MEC considered, if necessary, designate a person or persons to investigate the matter. In the light of the above, we are therefore informed that the Department for Corporate Governance, Human Settlement and Traditional Affairs, in partnership with the Provincial Treasurer, have established a multidisciplinary team which will be visiting your municipality from the 15 to the 17th, April 2020, to conduct the rapid assessment. On the first day, uh, the team will brief the municipal ESCO on purpose of the visit and is expected to meet with municipal manager and all section 57 managers, labor representatives, internal audits, PMS coordinators, and IDP manager for one interviews. Your cooperation in this regard will be highly appreciated and is written by the MPL Makamu. So I'm saying, Chairperson, this one also raised the very same concern to say that the court in the province, but the MEC in this regard must be the one who is leading this committee to take us into confidence and therefore can engage with the court at a provincial level. Because what you are raising here, and what is justified here by the executive mayor and the team about that deviation of the money is not the only concern that is there in the province. Even the cocktail in the province, they have raised the same concern. And I believe that there is also a range of issues that are also, uh, some of them concerns the fleet. Uh, I think is a, is a fleet mayor, is a fleet one? Or oh, there's an investigation uh, on is Fleet Africa. So I think the Fleet Africa took the municipality to court. And I think one of the colleagues raised that issue. So I don't know if the, 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 the leadership of the municipality also reported to the council. Would they have lost in the Supreme Court? 
they want to take this matter they've appealed. And there's another issue that is being investigated by the police in regards to the VBS, and there's also a case number there. So in this thing of the fleet, uh, the flagsman attorneys have requested the national treasurer to investigate with full uh, expenditure in the province. So there's a variety of issues that suggest that there is an element of corruption that is taking place there. So the tip of iceberg started from 2017 with that report that the mayor was presenting here and going to 2018. And I'm very, very, very concerned, Chair, if you are going to accept what the mayor and the team just presented to us here. And then the Babambelela Moguti is a standard procedure to deviate. That, not, that does not mean that if it's a standard procedure, this, so this, community, this committee is going to accept that. We are not going to accept the standard procedures that hide corruption in municipalities. So that's why before I was saying that, let me appeal to the conscience of the executive mayor because she is a political deployee. And as a political deployee, you also want to see your people benefit in terms of service delivery. Let's put, it, let us put aside what are the standard procedures in terms of the council rules who, at the end of the day, protect what our people on the ground does not benefit. So therefore, I'm saying let us open this meeting, Jefferson, by asking the MEC, and maybe the MEC can come with a quarter of the province. I'm not sure, Chair, but even the National Treasure has to explain some of these things that I'm raising, If how far they have gone. Also, the AG, I know the AG came here and explain their side of the story pertaining this municipality. But I'm saying we need to coordinate this thing better, Chair, because the picture that is painted about this municipality does not give a good picture. And we must not be fire extinguishers as this committee and wait until the situation gets worse on the ground. That's why I'm suggesting that as soon as possible, the MEC must come back with specific issues of Polokwane Chairperson and uh, we can take it from there. Thanks, Chair. Is it Honorable Teza? No, Chair, I'm covered, uh, Chair, by the by Honorable Mkalip. Uh, I wanted to, to say I'm, I'm quite baffled by the CFO not knowing the number of, of, of his uh, uh, staff there. I, I do not think that is acceptable uh, because we wouldn't come to this committee unprepared to. Uh, I don't think that is a standard procedure that we should follow and accept that uh, always we are told don't, we, we don't have numbers. And to, the, to, a, to, to a ridiculous extent of not even knowing your own uh, staff uh, that leaves a lot to be desired, Chair. I think that the committee has to look into that and not accept it in the future. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I also zoom the previous AG report as we were discussing for 2017-18. You use 35 million consultants. The figure that you were not so sure of uh, CFO. Other issue, you were supposed to break down your report on the unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. The members were not happy on the presentation. It, yes, it was there in the presentation, but the breakdown, because we wanted to understand I'll give you an example. For the irregular expenditure of 198.7 million in the 2016-17 financial year, what constituted that? And what consequence management was implemented for those who were finding, found wanting, who contributed to the 198.7 million irregular expenditure? That's, that's what we wanted to say. You'll indicate, you break it down until it's 198 million. It will call, tell us what, how much was it. Same thing with the 2017-18 financial year. 
you had 89.4 million in irregular expenditure alone, not referring to the others, uh, uh, unauthorized, uh, hopeless, and wasteful. You had 89.4 million of irregular expenditure. The same thing, you were going to break it down and tell us where you have recovered, where you have uh, instituted consequence management, this is what happened. Even now for the 2018-19, since the release, there's a lot of time that has lapsed. If there's indeed appetite to deal with these matters, for the 3.5 million for the 2018-19, you'll break it down for us also to say this is uh, what we have done to recover. In cases where you didn't want to recover, then these are the consequence management that we have implemented. We didn't see it in that presentation. Hence, so we said, go and break it down. Other municipalities have managed to do that for us. We have been able to look at that and track and probe it and ask further questions moving forward. That was the issue. The second one, there was the report of the MPEG. The MPEG was, I, I believe you brought the MPEG chairperson along with you because there was a question and wanted to hear from the MPEG itself its response on its, its its oversight because we found it not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I wonder if the MPEG chair is here because since we've been talking, we haven't had anything. Is the MPEG chair here in this meeting? Executive Mayor, do we have the MPEG chair in our attendance here? Uh, Honorable Chair, I'm checking he was here earlier on. Um, uh, Councillor Thierry. Well, well, I don't see him anymore. I think. Uh, you must have left the meeting, Chair. Without even bidding farewell to you. But you had explained it to him that we needed his response to this meeting, I suppose. Well, Chair, the, the committee, were, the members were selected on the basis of the questions that we were supposed to respond to when, and there were impact questions hence he was uh, requested to come to attend to the committee as the impact chairperson. Is the speaker in attendance? Yes, chair, my, my, my apologies. I forgot to indicate uh, the speaker was able to in and he is still in Andile? Andile? Chair President. There seems to be some awkward noises. Where are they coming from? It's from Mr. Thierry, the chairperson of MPEG, mm. I think. He's trying to speak. So he's around the chairperson yeah. of MPEG. Chairperson of MPEG, are you in attendance? So that 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 noise has disappeared. The mayor was still. The speaker is the speaker around here. Executive mayor. And, uh, honorable chair, I responded. I'm sorry if you couldn't catch me. That I indicated that the speaker was struggling to join. He subsequently was able to join. So I indicated when I responded to the questions right at the beginning, he was able to join in. Chair.
Uh, even it a person, I'm present, yes. You present? Yes, yes uh, I, I think you need to assist us with regard to the chairperson of MPEC because there were questions that members had for the chairperson of MPEC who happens not to be here. You make sure you secure the pre attendance of the chairperson of MPEC as proposed by Honorable Mkalipi, or will then send questions to the chairperson to respond to uh, them. Yeah. Okay, because Chair, but when you look here, it seems as if the chairperson is on, uh, but I will check with him. So why is he not coming to the microphone then? Don't Logging know, in Chief. and not being in the meeting something, eh? Yeah, let me check with him. Mm. So, colleagues, it's almost five minutes to ten. And we need to adjourn this meeting. I should believe the way forward is proposed by Honorable Mkalipi is the general feeling of the House. Then we'll also then, as we do that, ask Pulukwane Municipality to give us the, the breakdown of you of unauthorized, irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure for the past three financial year. How have they re resolved that? In cases where they had to recover money, they will indicate to us they've done that. In cases where they had to implement consequence management, they will tell us they did that and th these were the outcomes of those particular procedures. I should believe this is the information that they must provide to us latest by Tuesday. Then that will help us determine when do we call the MEC as proposed to by Honorable Mkalipi. Secondly, it's in relation to the information that relates to the settlement agreements, including the lawyer's fees. To that effect, is the information that they are going to, to, to retrieve coming from the service providers, including those uh, SP files of those affected employees. And that information will also be finished to this committee by Tuesday next week. Then the last one is proposed post our constituency period. We'll then schedule another day wherein the MEC must be in attendance. National Treasury must be share with us that analysis in detail of the liquidity and financial position of Polokwane municipality. In that meeting also, both Kokta Limpopo and National Kokta, Kokta nationally will also then share with us the kind of support they are providing to the municipality. Mm, the last one was on Salgane, as proposed. We will also talk to it to that effect. So basically, I should think we need to close the meeting on that note. Uh, we will send the questions to the chairperson of MPEC in writing as members have said, and then we'll also give the chairperson of MPEC to respond to the questions by Tuesday next week. So I should think that's how we should close this meeting. I believe I've summarized all your, all, 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 all your concerns, honorable, uh, honorable members. Did I omit something before I close the meeting? 
No, Jay. Sorry, I was going to say there's a message Honorable from... Honorable Jay. Andile? Yes, Chair, there's a message from uh, the chairperson of MPEC. Of MPEC. Uh, he's saying that he's connected, but his mic is not responding and he cannot hear anything. He's watching from TV because of poor network coverage. Okay. And I said, so oh, it's in, it's not about him absconding the meeting. It's just that no, uh, the technology is that that the technology is messing up with him. No, chairperson. Chairperson. Chairperson of MPEC. No, the speaker of Polokwane. Yes. Uh, the the chairperson. I've managed to get hold of him. Um, he's experiencing the problem with his gadget because of the load shading but uh, he is available. So we have heard what you have said, we'll communicate to him. Yes, he will just email the questions for him to yes, respond thanks. by Tuesday next week. There's been a lot of concerns by uh, the, the, the committee. Uh, the chairperson of Salga in the province, you want to comment now or you await for that meeting that's going to take place in the near future? Chair, thank you very much. E, through your indulgence, can I reserve my comment for a comprehensive presentation during that session? Okay, okay. We covered. Thank you so much, Chairperson of Salga the province. Mm, I think that should be the way forward. Can I ask for your indulgence? Mm. Executive Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, I have a request. We prepare on the basis of questions that are sent. We do not really say the committee I, I, I applaud to you not to sound like that. Chair, I'm not sure if my office and your office could be able to work through finalization of a written question with written answers as we had only received two additional questions. Could be expected to be known from the top of our heads, but we need to prepare so that we are able to respond to the issues to the full satisfaction of the committee. Uh, because matters chair which we summarized them at the beginning of the meeting and the responses were provided as per the summary that was given. Yes, the committee can continue to engage on other issues, it is understand the information where there is no satisfactory answer on the basis of what was uh, 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 requested and sent. Can it be sent in writing so that you also will have a record on what were those issues which were not responded to satisfactory? Yes, uh, Honorable Councillor Gadimel. We give you, we send you the, you will send the full recording of the meeting. And you were told that the meeting is adjourned to a later date. And as from where we are standing now, you could have reviewed the footage, as you said, plus. And then the written question is just a summary, but the point is that we're in the meeting, the meeting that couldn't, uh, conclude this business and to attend it to the later day. I've listened to everybody who has asked questions to you. There's nothing new. The questions asked are coming from the AG report that is at your disposal. 
they are coming out of your own presentation that you presented to the committee. So then the meeting you knew it was an again meeting. So no, nobody was going. So there were those issues that were said you need to respond to, like the issue of UISW. We still came back here. They will not responded to you. It's even being given the recording of the footage because somebody was supposed to have listened and reviewed that recording because that recording was sent to you as well to assist you refresh your memory. And then it will be difficult that now we ask members to write questions to you because as I'm indicating, all these questions that members are raising, they are coming from the AG report, your own presentation that you presented. Like I'll give you a classical example. You decided to just give us the settlement agreement and the charges without even disclosing the figures. And then you left the members to second guess because those are the issues that even if you had difficulty with the so-called service provider, whom you are telling us now that he or she have left with your systems, but that could have also been adequately responded to, to say we are not able to provide because if you give a member a settlement agreement, who doesn't even know at what level was this person any, and you leave it to the honorable member as well, I think it becomes problematic. So basically that's what we're saying to say, members, I didn't recall any member who asked you things that are outside of the of the documents that you, you yourself submitted. That the reason. The meeting continued. It was not a new meeting. We just continued when we left, and the members were at their own right to also ask questions as long as uh, they were not. That's why I allowed some of the questions because they are not outside of what you have presented, outside of what you have submitted. It was in relation to what you have submitted and what was presented in the previous meeting. So I should think that's the issue. Like for now, I've summarized what you need to. To, 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 to bring to us by Tuesday next week. I don't think I still need to write to you what you must bring by Tuesday next week because you are all here and today the beauty about it, you have got an entourage of over 21 people here. So that, that that's the issue that I hope they were noting. And then the only thing that we said we're going to write is to the MPEG chairperson who said that he had a problem with his gadget, he couldn't hear anything that was proceeding, and no one raised a question on MPEG issues because the MPEG chair was not here. Basically, that is it. Can we then adjourn this meeting to a later date that Thank will you, be considered in consultation with the MEC for local government? Thank the you, sir. In the province. Let me do the honors and check if all of you are still here in the meeting so that I can sign off your attendance register colleagues. I'll call your names again. Opperman. Adele. Present, Chair. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to say you're present or not. I can see you here. Direko. Uh, yes. How's Angie? Angie, Angie from... Mm -hmm. Coxta, you had our decision ne? for you to prepare your MEC day. I see you are here. I ended it Cornevald, Kalipi, Keza, Brink, Kaba. That's the attendance register and Pumza for the night. Thank you, colleagues. Still, we meet tomorrow at nine. Eh? Am I correct? Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Bye, Chair. Good yes, Chair. Yeah, 9 a.m. Oh, Set your, your, your clocks 10 minutes earlier, please. We are not sleeping or cruising the Mupani district. Oh, I see. Okay. It's fine then. Good night, everyone. Right. We are ready for two. We're ready for tomorrow, Chair. Who's it's ready? Awesome. It's Mopan. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, who's your chair, chairperson? Tomorrow.